As central to the book, of course, is Norma McCorvey, uh, who was known as Jane Roe. You spent time with her, like you said, when we started our conversation. You gained access to a lot of her papers. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about her? What was she like? What was her upbringing like? Who is Norma McCorvey? Help us understand what she's like. Yeah, it was a challenge because no, you asked a good question and it was a question Norma did not honestly answer until sort of I started working with her. The two books she wrote, one as a pro-choice advocate, one on the pro-life side, they just need to be regarded as fiction. Hmm. She was sort of peddling a story of her life that she saw might be sort of worthy of her pseudonym. You know, I'm Jane Roe, I need to have this sort of remarkable dramatic life. And there were constant lies. There was a reason for the lies. Um, she was sort of reimagining herself as not a sinner, but as a victim. To give a few examples, and then I'll answer your question, who was she really? Um, she told people, you know, that um, when she had her first child, that her mother kidnapped that child from her. When the truth was, she sort of begged her, her mother to take the child off her hands, uh, to adopt the child from her. She told people um, that she had been raped, um, and that was how she sort of conceived um, of, you know, the Roe baby. But in fact, um, it was a consensual affair with a, a drifter uh, named Bill Wheaton. Um, I, I write about all of the, the fathers of her children. Uh, she told people that when she wanted to have an abortion, um, uh, pre row she went, she found a clinic and she went there and it had just been shuttered and there was dry blood on the floor and it was very dramatic. The truth was much more mundane and much simpler and maybe even sadder. She simply could not afford it. She didn't have $500, which it would cost to sort of get the abortion or fly to California to happen. So who was she? She, she, she was born in, in rural Louisiana. Um, and to sort of step back, I show the three straight generations of women in her family. She was the third got unhappily pregnant when they were very young, her grandmother, her mother, and her. And the reason that to me was significant is the very same things that made the facts of their unwanted pregnancies catastrophes in their family were the same things that make abortion so fraught in this country. In their families, they were religious. Her grandmother was a Catholic and Pentecostal. Her mother was a Jehovah's Witness. When they become unhappily pregnant, it's like, horrible. The family wants to disown them. Just to give one story of her own mother when she gets pregnant, she's 17 years old. They make this poor woman, Mary, leave her town, give birth to the child, go to the city Baton Rouge, give birth to the child. Her parents then take the child from her. And Mary has to pretend that that child just across the Atchafalaya River is not her daughter, but her niece. Now I'm a father. And I mean, the thought of having to sort of give my children up and have them raised by someone else against my will is miserable. Anyway, so that woman then becomes an alcoholic, endless you know, affairs. This is Norma's parents. This is the home she grows up in. Sex is illicit, sex is simple. And all the more so when Norma then comes out to her parents, um, her mother unapologetically told me that she beat Norma when she came out. Um, Norma also was constantly in trouble. She's taken to a home for quote unquote, a school, excuse me, for quote unquote delinquent children. Um, and when she's 16 years old, she decides she's gonna get married. She's a car hop at a burger joint. She meets a guy there. She gets married. They have. She gets pregnant. She she lies again. Told people that her husband beat her. The truth was he was simply having affairs. She then the mother raises that child. She then gets pregnant again. Relinquishes that child to adoption, and she's pregnant for the third time when she becomes um, Jane Roe. I'll just add she'd had such a sad few years. She was a prostitute. She was a drug dealer. She was a drug user. She was working as a waitress. Um, in, in many lesbian bars where she was often just really drunk and had a very difficult life. And then here she is um, becoming Jane Roe and she did not care about women's rights. She did not care about a woman's right to choose. She simply wanted an abortion. An abortion she never received. Uh, her lawyers that she ends up working with, Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington, uh, they don't help her get an abortion. Uh, now, Norma comes to resent them for that. Can you explain why Norma never got the abortion that she saw and how her lawyers uh, maybe betrayed her, at least according to Norma, they did? They, they did betray her. You know, one of the things that was sort of remarkable, you mentioned how these people are often used by the movements they represent. Norma was used, marginalized, exploited by people on both sides of this issue. And it started right away. So here she is desperately wanting to have an abortion. Her doctor says, I'm sorry, it's illegal, I can't do this. She goes to her lawyer, uh, excuse me, she goes to the adoption attorney who's gonna help broker the adoption. His name is Henry McCluskey. He'd gone to law school 
um, with this woman, Linda Coffey. He says, I know she wants to file a suit. Let me connect you. Norma then meets Linda. Norma then, and Linda introduces her as well to Sarah Weddington. These are going to be your two lawyers. Now, they were desperate to find a plaintiff. It was very hard to find a plaintiff. You had to have a woman who, even if she was going to have a pseudonym, had to sort of be willing, in case that pseudonym is sort of, you know, discovered, her name's discovered, have to be willing to deal with the stigma of, you know, hey, yes, I'm, I, I want, um, I'm the person who sought an abortion. You also have to be willing to, you had to find, excuse me, a woman who couldn't afford, as they say, to go somewhere else. And they had to not be clued in. Like there were people, one of the characters in my book is a guy named Dr. Curtis Boyd. He's providing abortions in Texas pre-row, but most of his clients, most of his patients were, were college kids. You had to have someone who really was disenfranchised, who wasn't connected, who wasn't going to be able to find someone. Um, so this is Norma. And Norma at this point is approaching sort of the end of her second trimester. Now, in California, abortion was legal through the 20th week. And Sarah Weddington was actually working at an abortion referral network in Austin. She could have helped get Norma to California. She also herself had had an abortion. She had gone to a, um, a doctor south of the border in Mexico. She doesn't tell Norma about the doctor that she went to. She doesn't say she had an abortion. She doesn't tell Norma that she'd been working in an abortion referral network because they need a plaintiff. And when Norma later finds this out in 1992, when Sarah writes this in a book, Norma is furious. And even though her belief, excuse, her, her religion is for her a, a genuine source of comfort, and, and you can say that is why she became a born again Christian, first an evangelical, then a Catholic, that's true. But what really led to her about face, and she told me this, and you can see it in all of the uh, writings over the years and in the interviews she gave. She's furious at Sarah Weddington, feels betrayed. And to give one remarkable example of that, the night after her baptism in 1995, she's on Ted Koppel, she's on Nightline with Ted Koppel being interviewed. And even though she's now a born again Christian, you know, brand new, a new life for her, she says on air that she's that Sarah Weddington lied to me and how could she do that? And she goes off on this whole long thing. She also mentions that, that she believes in a right to choose through the first trimester. Yeah, I want to get to that Nightline interview in just a moment because it, it, it was, it just it revealed that Norma was a person of contradictions. Uh, yes. And, and it not, doesn't fit easily or neatly into our preconceived categories. Uh, so here she is, a woman who's just trying to get an abortion. They could have helped her get the abortion. Instead, they don't. They use her as a plaintiff in this lawsuit. Yeah. But Norma wasn't trying to make some big statement about uh, abortion. She just wanted her own personal abortion. But here she right. finds herself in this situation, uh, being Jane Roe in this court case. And I guess the reason that they didn't uh, direct her to get an abortion is because they didn't want... Uh, to lose standing in the court. Is that right? They were afraid their That's case right. would be dismissed? That's exactly right. In fact, there was one other potential plaintiff, a woman named Marsha King, who better represented their aims. She believed in a woman's right to choose, but the court, they, they file on her behalf as well. The court says she doesn't have standing because she's not pregnant at the time. Mm, I see. Okay. So so then you've referred to it a couple times that, that Norma becomes a, a Christian. Uh, and if I have the story right, she is working in a pro-choice clinic right next door to a pro-life clinic, and she's befriended uh, by a Christian. And, and can you tell us a little bit about that story of, of how it is that, that Jane Roe, Norma McCorvey, comes to uh, be a follower of Christianity? Absolutely. So one of the things that the pro-life movement has done and found very effective over the years is to establish what they call crisis pregnancy centers. And these are centers that at first glance might look like an abortion clinic. Um, they say just sort of in the front, you know, free pregnancy test and come in and speak to us, etc. And one of the sort of ways that they work is to set up on purpose right next door as close as they can to an abortion clinic, because this way they can sort of reach out to a woman who's walking into the clinic. And that is exactly what happens in Dallas, um, where a man named Flip Benham, who was at that point the head of Operation Rescue, um, sets up shop. And there is a woman who works in that center named Rhonda Mackey, and she has a daughter named Emily. And little by little, 
Rhonda and Emily start speaking to Norma. Um, and Emily was, I interviewed them obviously, and Emily was a lovely kid, very smart, very precocious. And they start befriending Norma and Flip, who had become, he was a, a born again Christian. He starts speaking with Norma in the parking lot there. And what was so interesting was, you know, whether you agree with him or not, he was warm to Norma. He reached out to Norma. He befriended Norma. Whereas the pro-choice, as I say, really sort of marginalized her. And so it's not very long. It's, it's under a year from the time that they meet to the time that she then decides that she will have Flip baptize her. And Flip has his own story with abortion in his past. Before he became a Christian, he uh, wanted his wife to get an abortion. She refused. Uh, she gave birth to twin baby boys, and those yeah. baby boys became really important in Flip's life. Yeah. The life of his life. And in fact, you know, that's not a coincidence. People on both sides of this issue, I mentioned before the story that Justice Blackman had and Justice Powell, you know, on the Supreme Court, where they their eyes were open to um, the issue by, by human beings who had suffered as a result of not having abortions. And here is someone on the exact, with the exact opposite experience, Flip, and there are many people in the pro-life leadership like this, who he says to himself, my God, you know, had, had, an, had an abortion taken place, I would have lost what's most precious to me. And I believe that abortion is fraught for good reason. That on the one hand, you have the sort of, you know, humanity of the fetus. On the other hand, you have the very sort of real reasons a woman might wish to have an abortion. And I think it does us all good to recognize that no matter where you stand on the issue, it is complicated. 